What's up, YouTube? Mike with Mike's Manga Hunt here, back again. And today, let's take a look at the very first issue of Shonen Jump Magazine. Not going to keep you all waiting, so without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, what's up, everybody? This may be the day from hell when it comes to recording. This is like the fourth video I try to record today. And every single video so far has had some sort of issue with it where my camera tells me that I'm still recording, but I'm not. And then like five minutes after that fact, it'll cut off and then like I'll try to do it again. And I don't even know how to explain it. It's just been really, really messed up. Uh, this is the third video I've tried to do today. So hopefully now that I've kind of like tinkered with some settings and like fixed some stuff, hopefully now we're in the clear. But I guess there's only really one way to find out. So let's see what we got here. So hi, everybody. Starting over again, here's issue one of Shonen Jump Magazine. This came out in January 2003. It's got two covers here. We got good old Yugi on the one side and we got Goku on the other side. Right, so I had a lot of fun um, last summer when we went through that old issue of Shonen Jump Magazine, the one that I kind of like read for the first time that got me into all this stuff. So I thought now, because I need a video, why not go through the very first issue? Let's see what we got in here, what cool ads, what cool manga we got in here, maybe a little extra stuff, and let's just experience it together for the first time. So on the front here, we got an exclusive interview with Akira Toriyama. We got Super Saiyan Goku right here. That's probably definitely the big selling point. Dragon Ball was huge in 2003 over here. We got One Piece, definitely not huge at the time yet. We're very, very beginning to One Piece here. We got Yu Yu Show. That was probably airing on Toonami around this time. Uh, we got Sandland, which also by Akira Toriyama. And we got Yu-Gi-Oh! Probably the second popular thing here. That's probably why they're both on the uh, the covers here. So, without further ado, I've already actually read a few pages of this because this is the second time I'm recording this video, but let's just see what we got going on here. So in the front, I noticed right away, I really like this cool like design here from Toei Animation. Uh, congratulating Shonen Jump on their first uh, US release. Because over here, it explains to you how Shonen Jump's actually a really big deal in Japan. You know, they release one every single week, and that's how you kind of get the updated chapters on your favorite manga. So we can kind of see some old issues here. We got Yugi up here, and we got Hikaru no Go in the corner over here. We got Naruto, Shaman King. I can't tell what this is right here. Oh, that's Hikaru no Go. I see it right there. Uh, Luffy's up in this corner. He's kind of hard to see with a little chopper there. And I don't know what this is right here, but uh, that's... Uh, that's something. So we got a little bit of history of like the Shonen Jump brand and what exactly it is in the weekly Shonen Jump magazine, which is pretty cool. Kind of introducing a new audience to that magazine here. And then we got the old school table of contents. Only five manga in this one. They would add more as it would go on. Uh, the next issue adds Naruto. And then the issue after adds Shaman King. And that's kind of like the first year's like uh, worth of manga for the magazine. So we got Dragon Ball Z. Yu-Gi-Oh! is the two big ones here. Yu Yu Hakusho is probably number three right here. Uh, in terms of like familiarity in america when these when this magazine came out we got sandland also by akira toriyama and we got one piece which little did we know would become this really really huge thing still ongoing today i just read the volume 99 yesterday actually so that shows you how long one piece is here we got an interview with akira toriyama and we got some little blurbs about games and cards and toys and stuff so let's see what we got here this is a little blurb about their launch of uh issue zero it's right here. I guess they released this kind of like first to get uh, like a feel on how manga perform in the uh, United States. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on that. I don't know how much it's worth, but uh, that'd be cool to own one day. So it's a little bit of a festival they did here. We got little pictures of here. We got Luffy and Sandland autographed by Oda and uh, Toriyama. I think that's pretty cool here. We got some cosplayers in here. Uh, we got some Dragon Ball cosplayers up here with little masks on. I think that's really funny. So let's see what's next. We got our interview with Akira Toriyama. Kind of goes through like. I'm not going to read all of this, but this is kind of cool, like these little interviews they did here with like authors. I never see like interviews with the Kira Toriyama, especially like, well, at least over in America, you don't really see these very often. So we got a little thing here about his uh, works. We got Dr. Slump in 79. That's uh, really, really funny. I really like Dr. Slump. I read most of it. Uh, Dragon Ball starts in 84, goes all the way up to uh, 95. And in Japan, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z are one long going like show, just Dragon Ball. So uh, the manga is at least. So that's why I don't differentiate here. Uh, Cow is 97. That's available in America. It's very hard to find. I wouldn't mind owning that one day. And then Sandline came out in 2000. It's only a few years after, uh, before this magazine came out. So we got a little interview with Kira Toyama. This goes on for a while, actually, as you can see here. He's got a whole bunch of stuff about characters and drawing and his kind of like technique and like what he enjoys and stuff. So here's a, here, let's look at one of the questions here. Like, how long does it take to draw Goku? Uh, let's see. How long does it take to draw one chapter of Dragon Ball? 
Uh, very depending if episode, but it goes quickly. It takes about 20 hours. If it goes by slowly, it can take a week. That's pretty impressive. 20 hours for one chapter, which you got to think uh, once a week. You know, that's a lot of that's a lot of work. So, just imagine like uh, Oda right now writing One Piece every single day like that. That's that that's a lot of dedication. So, God knows I can never do it. And we go right from Dragon Ball into Yu-Gi-Oh over here, which is a cool. It's a nifty tran transition over here. Uh, this issue came with the legendary, now famous uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon with like the Earth behind it. That's a very rare card. Of course, I, my copy didn't come with that, but it used. So, a uh, uh, really cool card to have. They reprinted this card in a different set. I know that. So, but the first thing I want to talk about here is actually, if you look at Yu-Gi-Oh down here, uh, the characters' names are not what we're used to. We got Genochi for Joey. They even had a, had to like uh, put it in here that like. In the anime, he's known as Joey Wheeler. Yugi stays the same. Taya is Anzu, I'm not mistaken. Yep, uh, she's known as Taya Gardner. This is like, you know, when we realized, oh, maybe they changed a lot of the stuff that we're familiar with. And then uh, Tristan over here is Hirocho Honda. So again, here he's known as Tristan Taylor. And we got some color pages. These aren't actually in the manga volume, uh, volume one of Yu-Gi-Oh. I have that volume and they're not in color, they're in black and white. So this is really cool. Um, this first chapter here is kind of just like Yugi putting the puzzle together, kind of like learning about the spirit of the Millennium Puzzle. Uh, this is flashbacks in the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! that like we saw in America, uh, which is actually really cool looking at this actually the more I think about it because this is not the Yu-Gi-Oh! we know. There's no cards. I think they may, I think they make a reference to that somewhere in here. Like, where are the cards? Uh, yeah, they are. There it is. Where are the cards? Yu-Gi-Oh! card game doesn't show up until later in the manga. The first card game will appear in Shonen Jump Volume Number 4 in April, with the first appearance of Kaiba. So, yeah, Volume 1, the first volume of Yu-Gi-Oh! There's no cards involved. It's more just like kind of mind games. You kind of learn about Yu-Gi himself, how he becomes friends with uh, Jinochi and Honda or Joey and Tristan over here. So, this story is kind of flashback in the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! that we got. But uh, this is all from Season 0. Here's the bully. And I throw the last piece of the puzzle in the water. Uh, and he's got to go catch it. There's... Uh, Yugi's grandpa looks a lot more menacing here than he did uh, in the first episode of the TV show. I'll tell you that much. Uh, we got a lot more action here. We got fists being thrown instead of cards, you know. Season 0 is a lot more darker than uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! itself. Like the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist and Yu-Gi-Oh! card game. Uh, literally playing mind games to the fact where he just thinks leaves his money. It's it's really, really dark. I, it's really cool. I really like it. Definitely a big uh, different take on things. So there's probably just two chapters in here, I imagine. So, right? No, only just the one. So, we only got one chapter in this issue. I guess kind of just get our feet wet, you know, show us what we got going on here. This is a shorter issue than most of them. Uh, some of them get really, really thick at the end here. Next, we go to Dragon Ball Z, and they start it here uh, at the end of Namek uh, with the Android Saga, which I imagine that that's, I mean, what can you do here? Dragon Ball Z is like a, you know, at least, it's gotta be at least 300 chapters worth of uh, stuff here. So you gotta start it somewhere. Uh, at this point, also in America, I don't know where we were at this point, like with the episodes airing weekly. Uh, so I imagine this is about where we were probably. So it's probably just keeping us up there, but it's probably the best saga or one of the best sagas to, uh, start like intro wise for, uh, the magazine here. Cause a lot of cool action scenes, a lot of cool fighting, you know? So we got the return of Frieza's Goku kind of getting off a Namek, Super Saiyan. There's the explosion. And then here they are waiting for him, but he doesn't want to come back because, you know, he's got to do some training because he's Goku. Can't come back right away. There's Piccolo here. We got Vegeta now living on Earth. There's also kind of where Vegeta starts to turn his character around into more of a uh, anti-hero. And here's the appearance of Mecha Frieza. So that means Trunks is around the corner. Is this him right here? Oh, well, I guess we'll find out next issue, actually. That's really a good other place to stop it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that is him, actually. You can see by the feet there. Next, the mysterious young man. So, you only get one chapter per each volume in here. That's kind of lame, but I guess uh, for the very, very first volume, they didn't, didn't want to overstimulate you. So, here's Sandland. This is a one-off. I know that. There's no, like, volumes here. It's one volume long. It's, like, 20 chapters. Uh, they finished this at the end of the first year. They have the whole thing in here. Then they just go on to uh, Hikaru Nogo. They add in here later. And that, that kind of goes on for a very long while here. So I never read all of Sandland. I, I've read some of it. I don't remember his name. <laughs> but uh, it's you can tell it's very, very Akira Toriyama in like, its appearance. All the characters look very... That guy looks like Nap over there. He got the the spiky hair that they usually, he usually has. His little like dragon creatures he likes to draw. So Sandland's not too bad, if I'm not mistaken. I ha I'd have to read it again. It's, I haven't read this in at least 10 years. So... Very, very behind. He even poses like someone like, like, like that's, that's such a Vegeta pose right there. And he's got a tail. Of course, he has a tail. So, 
we got Sandland here. Even the outfit like that he has is very like reminiscent of like the uh, the orange gi they wear. So with even with the little logo in the corner here. So that's pretty cool. That's Sandland. I'm not gonna spend too much time on Sandland. That's a underrated manga though. Definitely have to read it again to kind of catch up on it. But again, it's very short. Uh, we got more here, I guess. Oh, how manga's made. That's kind of cool. Kind of shows you the process here from, uh, you know, drawing and, you know, writing and all this. Look at all these arrows. Look, look, look how complicated it is. It's like here to here to here to back to here to, to here to here. So, but uh, the end product is there you go. That's volumes of manga in Shonen Jump Magazine. The first manga is published in the U.S. So, this is pretty cool. Our little uh, little stand here is falling apart, so I gotta put this back together here. We got more interviews, a lot of interviews, a lot of information in these magazines. It's pretty cool. If you ever had the time to read it, there's more Carnoga. We'll, we'll be seeing this one in a year. Uh, anything here? This is more Dragon Ball Z stuff, kind of its history of airing on TV. Uh, we got some ads in the middle. We got Ultimate Muscle. That's a. I always forget this exists. I really do. Uh, every time I see it, it like it unlocks like a like a nostalgia cap for me. Uh, Ultimate Muscle. What a what a show. We got some volume. We got some advertising here for the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, on DVD and VHS. This is how old this magazine is. The dueling continues November fifth, two thousand and two. My goodness. These things had like three episodes each too. I remember that. Uh, I have a few of these still actually. They're not very good. We got some uh, manga updates here. Yeah, see, Yu Hakusho was airing on Toonami at this time. I don't know how far we were. It doesn't really say, but here's like a thing of like a VHS tape coming out. And then over here we got Dragon Ball Z. They were so we were on the Buu Saga at this point. So we were past. The Android Saga, so I don't know why they started it there, but uh, we got some advertising for some Boo Saga VHS DVDs here. This is the very, very end, too. So, what we got here? We got some toys, some Dragon Ball Z toys. I used to collect a bunch of these when I was younger. Uh, I don't have any of these ones. I think these are a little before I started collecting. These are Dragon Ball lines. We got Yamcha in this Dragon Ball uh, suit. We got Mai. We got Kid Goku over here in launch, so I don't have any of these ones. Let's see what we got over here. We got a thing on JoJo's. This won't come over here for a very long time from here. I think it's not until like 2005 when you start getting like uh, little things about JoJo's here. Never got into JoJo's. One day I'll give it a shot. I, I always tell myself that. So here we go. We got more Yu-Gi-Oh DVDs here. These are uh, number three and four. Very early on in the show here, as you can see, uh, we're in the heart of Duelist Kingdom here. There's Pegasus. So uh, these things have like three episodes each on them. They're not very good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting those to like watch Yu-Gi-Oh. We got a video game. We got some video games. Let's see what we got here. One Piece Treasure Battle on the GameCube. This is an import, obviously, because One Piece had not yet aired here. We got Ultimate Muscle, another import here. That's kind of cool they're showing imports. I never really noticed that they did that in these in these magazines. So if you really wanted to try to get these games, I guess you could. But uh, at this point, you know, no one would know what One Piece is. Ultimate Muscle, I think we would. So we got an ad here for... Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1. I played the hell out of this game when I was a kid. Uh, it's not very good nowadays, um, but this is kind of like the best way I experienced Dragon Ball Z story, which is really funny uh, in this game of all things first. Uh, but like dialogue-wise and like story-wise, it's very, very accurate. Uh, Fighting-wise, it's very outdated. Uh, are you just better off playing Budokai 3 at this point? It's so much better uh, in terms of like mechanics. So, here's that for Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1. Really, really cool. These graphics, they're so nostalgic. So, that's kind of cool. Here we go. We got more of a uh, advertisement here for Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1. We got the character lineup here. Not very long, as you can see. Uh, which is funny, actually, because in Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2, some of these characters aren't in it. So, it's like like uh, Android 19's not in it. I know is not in it. Zarbon's not in Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. So, these characters will get added back in until like, later. But this is really cool to look at here. This only goes up to the Android Saga, which is what most things did back then. It was 50 bucks. Wow, I can get the game probably for like $5 nowadays, but I still have this game actually. Uh, it holds a place in my heart, so I, hold, I held on to it, so that's pretty cool. We got Dragon Ball Z Budokai here. Ooh, we got some Yu-Gi-Oh games here. This game, I played, I bought this game when it came out. I still have all three of these cards to this day. Um, this game's really cool. I was actually, I was actually just playing uh, the one that comes after this, Stare to Destined Duel, uh, the other day, just to kind of get like a nostalgia hit on Yu-Gi-Oh, but I played the hell out of this game too. Remember, I never got all the characters unlocked, all the duelists unlocked, but uh, I'm very, very close here. We got Dungeon Dice Monsters up here. I don't know. This game was okay. I was never a big fan of Dungeon Dice Monsters. And uh, Duelist of the Roses. This game is great. It's not your traditional Yu-Gi-Oh game, of course, but it is so weird. It is so good. Uh, man, I, this game brings back some memories. I love Duelist of the Roses. I still have that game, too. 
And over here we got an ad for, Duels, for the uh, Eternal Duelist Soul, which is very, very good, just traditional Yu-Gi-Oh. I remember playing this after, like, just only watching, like, the show. And the rules are, like, this is, like, tournament-style Yu-Gi-Oh. This, this is, like, actual official rules. And not understanding how to play the game. This is how I learned how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, just by playing this game. It was very, very crazy. Uh, very, very good game back in the day. A little boring sometimes, but, you know, uh, very, very good. All right, now we got Yu Yu Hakusho going on here. I've actually never read, read this full through. I've seen a bunch of episodes. I know most of the stuff about Yu Yu Hakusho, but I'm waiting to get all the volumes now in uh, in English, the Shonen Jump volumes, or, or the uh, the manga volumes, I should say. But right now, they're really hard to come by, so I'm waiting for them to get reprinted, and I cannot wait to go through Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, I know the general uh, basis of it. I love chapter one of Yu Yu Hakusho. It's very, very good. Uh, spoilers, you Yu Yusuke dies. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say there, but... Uh, Yokus is very, very good. Where's my boy Kuwabara? Is he here? I don't see him yet, but... Oh, there he is. No, that's Yusuke. Never mind. I look like him for a second. That was the guy I always liked. I want to see if you, if you can kind of catch a glimpse of him. I doubt it. But, uh... Oh, there he is. It's, there's Kuwabara. That's our guy right there. I like him a lot. So, Yokus is cool. I never really, like I said, I got too, too into it. I've seen a few episodes here and there. Uh, I know the general like the like the, the like the plot line of it. I know the Dark Tournament arc is like the biggest arc in the series, and uh, one day I'm gonna read the whole thing, and hopefully it's soon. I think the volume start restocking back like in June of this year, so that'd be really cool to finally go through Yu Yu show. Once again, though, we get one chapter I think, and that's about it. Maybe two chapters. This, this, this feels like two chapters actually. So maybe we got two chapters here, and to be continued. If I'm not mistaken, this is in. Shonjo Magazine from this volume all the way to like almost the end. They go through the entire series in uh, in the magazine. So if you have every issue from like now to like, I want to say like maybe like 2010, 2011, you will get the entire Yu Yu show like in the manga. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And here's the goat. We got one piece right here. Oh, just one page over. Romance Dawn. There's Goldie Roger himself. I love chapter one of One Piece so much. Uh, I love One Piece with a passion, as you guys all know. So it's really cool seeing this, especially like this big. I wish they did One Piece volumes like this, like colored, like this big, kind of like print size. I would buy that up in a heartbeat. It'd be so cool to read. Romance Dawn. And little did we know, like I said before, that this is going to still be going on 22 years later. Here he is. Monkey D. Luffy. Where's our boy Shanks? He should be here. There he is. Red haired Shanks. So hopefully he kind of, you know, comes up a little bit sooner here. You know, we don't really see too much of him. We got anybody else here? We got his crew. There's a uh, Lucky Root. Is that his name? Right there. Guy's always eating something there. The one who has the gum gum fruit. Is Ben Beckham here too? There he is. There's Ben Beckham. Little do we know these guys would be like actually really, really crazy later on in the, sh in the uh, series, especially around, you know, Marine Ford. So that's really cool. We got, like, you know, here. Uh, how far does this go? Actually, we got the bandit leader who kind of causes some trouble. If I'm not mistaken, this puzzle, oh, there, there's Luffy eating the fruit. Look, he's stretching out here. Uh, his arm's stretching. The gum gum fruit took from that enemy ship. The gum gum fruit. Uh, anything else going on here? Not really right now. You know, more of like just the beginning. Luffy wanted to explore, wanting to go with Shanks. There he is. Reason or not, nobody hurts a friend of mine. Where's uh, when Luffy kind of goes out to sea? Where, where, where's that scene? I think we all know what scene we're talking about here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. What a guy. I really hope Shanks doesn't turn, like, bad. So, it's really cool looking at this again. If I'm not mistaken, there's the, uh, what we might think is uh, Conqueror's Hockey right here. Him doing that with his eye. So, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and then we got, here we go. There's the famous uh, giving Luffy the hat scene there. Keep this hat safe and give it back to him when, you know, becomes a good pirate. So, might be getting close to this. I'm just saying. And here we go. We're going to end here again on chapter one. So here's a little foreshadowing. I like, I like this panel here. We need time to get his crew. I think about 10 men should do. And let's see where we're at now. I think we're at 10. Right? I don't know if that 10 includes Luffy. But if it doesn't, then we need one more. And I think it's going to be Yamato. But uh, if not, then we're at the 10 right now with Jinbei. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to be king of the pirates. All right. We got a few more advertisements. And then we're... Uh, done with the magazine here so let's see we got the old dragon ball z card yeah i used to have a bunch of cards from this uh here can't tell you how to play it i have no idea i just remember just buying the packs and looking at the cards because they were really cool because they were dragon ball z cards oh here we go we got some Yu Gi Oh cards here i love Yu Gi Oh cards uh this is magic ruler i can tell you right now or spell ruler now 
looking at some of these staple cards that will forever be banned. Axe of Despair, classic, uh, quip, quip uh, a thousand attack point card. We got Spellbinding Circle, the old school fiendish chain. We got the band trio here. We got Snatch Steel, steal your opponent's monster, gain a thousand life points. You got Delinquent Duo, just take cards out of your hand. Same with the Forceful Sentry here. We got the staple MST, which I don't think is a staple anymore, but we got MST, we got Megamorph. We got the Toons, two Mermaid, Toon Summon Skull. We got some supers here. The, these cards, I remember being a pain in the ass, especially if you didn't have removal back in the day. These two cards would be a nightmare because they would lock you. They would, they would lock you in very, very hard. We got Toon World, Black Illusion Ritual, Painful Choice. That card will never come back. Same with Churnade, probably. These two will probably never come back, but they're classic old school Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And we got Confiscation. That'll never come back either. And we got Maha Vilo. Remember doing a lot of chatting into this card with the quip spells like Black Pendant and Invader Throne. That's really cool. Look at the hollows of. Uh, Spell Ruler and Magic Ruler here. Over here, we got the official uh, tournaments. I uh, guess you can join a tournament now. We collect over 30 exclusive cards. That's really cool. Here we got some Pharaoh Servant cards here. Goblin Attack Force. I would love to have a copy of this card. This card's so nostalgic to me. The Megasire, Beast of Talwar. Here's uh, Thousand Eyes Restraint. This card was banned for a very long time. Premature Barrel. That card is still banned. We got uh, Mako Tsunami's Legendary Fisherman. Buster Blader. Classic anime card. Ceasefire, I remember, having, I remember having this card when I was younger. I still have this, Chain Destruction, from uh, Pharaoh Servant. And then there's Call of the Haunted, uh, again from the anime slash classic uh, old school staple. Here's Pharaoh Servant, November 2002. I remember when this set came out, I bought a ton of packs of this because everyone wanted Jinzo. So that was the way to get it, the only way to get it at the point. We got some tins. I remember I used to have this tin right here. I bought that tin when it first came out. I got it for Christmas, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we got some spells here. We got some classics. As in limited removal, that card still gets some play sometimes. You got Gear Feared here. That's a classic anime card. Moment Across that was very good for a very long time. Mirror Wall also was. Dust Tornado, very, very good too. And we got Parasite. Parasite with the uh, edited artwork here. I think it's like going through like a guy's like head in like the actual original artwork here. Backup Soldier and Grave Robber. Magical Hats. Those are kind of more anime cards. Got here Dragon Ball Z trading cards. I don't know what any of these do. I don't know what any of these numbers on the side here do. I remember being very confused, but here they are. That's cool. The World Game Saga. Some cool looking cards, looking shots from the anime here, which is pretty cool. Look at that card. That'd be a cool card to have. Got more Yu-Gi-Oh! Tin, some Yu Yu Hakusho fan art. Got some more Dragon Ball Z. I actually have some of these, these Dragon Ball Z film cards here. They're like just little cards that like uh, shots from like the movies and like the episodes and stuff like that. They're really cool. Um, I think I maybe have like two or three of them. They might be lying around somewhere. We got some more figures here for Dragon Ball Z. You can get 17 in like the uh, this big red ribbon army thing. We got Yakon, Gohan. We got Vegeta here, and Goku on this like weird mech looking thing. That's pretty cool. I don't think I have any of these figures, but I have a few. Not these ones though. Here we go. Here's some more figures. I don't have these. These are really cool. I remember seeing these though in the stores. I used to see them all the time. I never bought them though. Uh, don't have these, but they were $34.99 each. I don't have these. Uh, I actually have this one and I got oh no I have Kibito I have Kibito Shin I have Kibito Kai but I don't have uh, them separately I do have the Super Saiyan 3 Goku though somewhere I remember having this toy uh, I have Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks I don't have this one here and then down here I think I had this I have this Gohan I know that it's a weird Gohan but I have that one what's over here these are weird looking Lego Dragon Ball guys I don't have any of these never saw any before in my life look at these ones oh my god these are ugly but uh that's the last page of the magazine here. We got a little bit of like what's coming up to go here. Look, we got first crewmate, imprisoned pirate hunter, Rona Zoro. That's coming up. Zoro, not Zolo too, which is uh, good. We got Yu Hakusho, another chapter here. We got Trunks, Sandland, uh, Yugi. And there it is coming next, Naruto. That won't be popular. No way. <laughs> so that's the end of the magazine. Look, they're already, we're already waiting for him too. He's already here. So. That's why I want to show and jump. I don't know if that was interesting or not. Please let me know if it's interesting. I'll do more of these if you guys like them. I have a bunch of issues here. So let me know in the comments if you like that. Hopefully this video recorded. I guess if you see it, it means it actually went through. So uh, without further ado though, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here and I'll see you on the next occasion. Have a great day.